Welcome to the Equipped Agronomy Podcast, where we bridge that gap between seeding equipment and agronomy. Welcome. Welcome. I'm excited about this. My name's Curtis DeGoyer, I should say, and this is sitting beside me here, Mr. Jeff Strukoff. Hello, hello. Jeff, I am excited about today, uh, about this crop. I like it. I like it a lot. What are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about hybrid fall rye. I too like this crop. I, I really like this crop. And there's some cool agronomic things that we're doing. I don't know if you call it different, but we're, we're trying out a, you know, how do you get your fertilizer down with it, right? Uh, there's some other agronomic aspects to this crop that's a little bit different. There's a few practical aspects too. We yeah. Should, we should talk about both when we're getting into it. Sure. Yep. Let's, let's talk about it all. Uh, it has to go with it. We've grown fall rye here for, well, fall rye is different from hybrid fall rye. Very, very different. Uh, in that there is, I mean, obviously a hybrid, you know, two cross coming together and then you've got your one, you know, output on it. And I think that we really want to dive into maybe some of those differences, some of the challenges between the two. Uh, fall rye in general, fall rye has always been known as like a cheapo kind of throw it in. It's going to scavenge for what it needs crop that you just kind of you know, secondhand crop kind of thing, right? Graze in the spring. Yeah, do whatever. Do whatever, combine it don't put, don't put much for nutrients into it. Yeah. Hybrid fall rye is not that way. Well, I mean, I guess it could be. Well, yeah, it kind of, it's... Yeah, well, you keep going. We'll get into it in a bit. Well, I say it, it could be, but mm. holy moly, are you paying lots for seed? That's the one downfall. It's uh, yeah. And it's an extremely expensive uh, seed. To purchase, and you know, obviously it's a hybrid. You got to purchase it every time you grow it. Um, Back that up. You can't keep our own seed? Uh, no. Are you winking at me? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't keep your own seed. Definitely not. <laughs> Definitely not on that one. And I think there is, yeah, agronomic aspects to to the hybrid, obviously, right? It's just like canola. It's like yep. canola, right? You, yep. you, If you want to get the full value and get hybridity, you just pay. You pay. Like to the tune of... Like what, 80 bucks an acre? Or a little bit better, yeah. Or a bit better. Yeah. So more expensive than canola. Yeah. Seed, right? But overall production costs are, are lower than uh, than canola. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. You, uh, you well, I'm, I'm sure there's people that do it a little bit different than we do, but, uh, you know, it, it doesn't take a lot of herbicide. It's an unfair competitor. So it actually chokes out a lot of the weeds on its own. So you don't have to use a very expensive herbicide when you're spraying in the spring. Um, you know, there's been some work done with fungicide and whether it responds to fungicide or not. We have not seen any results from actually treating it with a, a fungicide. Hmm. Uh, we've kind of determined that as long as you treat it really good at the time of seeding, and feed it the groceries that it actually needs, it will perform in all sorts of adverse conditions. So, but from, from a, a practical standpoint or from my side, uh, from the farming side, uh, it gives you the opportunity to get a few acres. It's, it's a very congested seeding when you have a uh, time of year when you got to get the seeding done because mm -hmm. harvest is either right around the corner or you're in the middle of it, but you got to get some crop off to make some room to get the, the crop seeded. So it's, there's a little bit of congestion. There's some timing logistics there with that. There's no yeah. doubt, right? And trucks are full with, with on harvest side. Yeah. You want to go get your fertilizer and, yeah. and there is, there's some challenges to, to get over at the time of seeding in the fall. There's but, no doubt. But then the benefits, of course, you get some seeding done uh, when you, you're not so quite so pressed for, for time in the spring. Uh, but it really does give you the opportunity to get your harvest equipment out a little bit earlier because end of July, very beginning of August, you know, in our neighborhood, that would be very early for combining on a normal year for us. Yeah. Uh, but it gives you the opportunity to get everything out. You get all the kinks worked out when you're, you know, if you're going to break something, hopefully you do it right then or you identify any problems so that you got time to fix it before you really have to give her. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's, it spreads the workload out a little bit. So we've got some, our, our point of interest, seeding, seeding equipment and with it and the fertilizer, fertilizing of this crop, I think is where we're most interested in. Yep. I mean, obviously we got to get this crop off, but uh, we did initiate one trial with this one here because the question will be raised of, okay, well, how do you get in your fertility? And you talked about that a little bit where, you know, give it what it needs at the start. 
Well, we're typically seeding this what? End of when do we seed this year? September? Uh, usually right at the very, very end of August. You, August technically, September. you want to have it in by about the 10th of September. Right. Yeah, I think that's crop, here, crop here. insurance, right? Yeah, we don't get we don't take crop insurance. But is that what the cutoff is? We're, for we're gamblers. We don't yeah, take crop insurance. Yeah, we're silly. Yeah. Um, so you're getting it in then. So what do you do for fertility-wise on it? So we had a trial 2016, well, the fall of 2016 into 2017. Uh, how do we put down enough nitrogen? And we're going to feed this crop... Pretty much like, a, well, like a, a spring wheat crop, mm -hmm. right? Uh, where we're putting down, we had five different treatments. Okay. So, you know, the timing of the nitrogen going in, do you put it all at the time of seeding or do you broadcast in the spring or do you do a split of it, of the two? And, and that's why we set this trial up. Uh, that's why we wanted to see which is the best. So what we had, 100 pounds of urea going down at the time of seeding. So that's only you know, 46 pounds of, of nitrogen going down. Uh, at the time of seeding. So we were putting, in this case, we were using a single knife with banders. So we're putting maybe 30, 35 pounds of foss in with the seed row, some potash, uh, you know, and that's what we kept the same across the board. We're just looking at nitrogen in this case. Then we also had a 300 pound urea treatment in this one. In the mid-row. In the mid-row. This yeah. is mid-row band. Yeah. In mid-row banding uh, through our mid-row banders, 300 pounds. So three times that, right? So it's 130 some-ish pounds of actual end going down. But our standard, I would say, was going to be that 200 pounds of urea. So just shy of 100 pounds of actual N, you know, with the FOSS nitrogen, you know, it's right around 100 pounds of N, actual uh, total going in. So we put down 200 pounds of urea at the time of seeding in the fall through the mid-row. And then we didn't top dress that, those strips in the spring. Then we did another one where we only put 100 pounds of urea down in the fall. We top dressed in the spring with a broadcast air boom, a uh, hundred pounds of super U, Coke super U. So it's treated urea, or I guess it's, you know, efficiently enhanced fertilizer, super U, uh, which is what you want to be putting on for a broadcast application. Cause there's no incorporation after that, right? You're just putting it on top of the crop that's growing. And then we did a, uh, the last treatment was no urea went down in the fall at all, but we top dressed 200 pounds. And that's how we got our, our nitrogen down. So all super U. All super U spring broadcast. Correct. Okay. So you kind of see how it's laid out here a little bit. This is pre U. This is pre Jeff. This is pre me. This yep. is this is me out there playing around a little bit and uh, you know seeing which is the best nitrogen placement uh, for a fall crop. In this case, hybrid fall rye could be applied though. I think to all fall crops. There's actually been quite a bit of work done. Anyway, you carry on. Uh, we'll uh, yeah. Okay. About. What do we find? What do we find out there then? You're right. So the 100 pounds urea, we got about, we got 77.1 bushels, 100 pounds urea going down the mid-row band. It was actually a fairly dry year, uh, I think in 2017. Uh, 2016, it was hard, it was hard, it was a hard winter, I should say. It was hard on the crop a little bit. There were some bare patches. Um, so 77 bushel though, still not bad. Not, we're, not too bad. Not no. bad. But like, that's where I like fall rye. Like we're going for 100 bushel every time we put it in, I would say is our goal right so it was a little low a little low but when i did 300 pounds of urea uh we actually got it up to 86 bushel 86.3 in that one significantly significant significantly <laughs> statistically statistically significant statistically significant it was significant it was a it was a bunch uh and then we go into 200 pounds of urea in the fall going down in the mid row uh with nothing top dress we got 85.5 bushels did the split 100 and 100 100 and fall 100 in the spring we got 83.7 bushels so it dropped a little bit not significantly but it did drop a little bit and then we did the fall zero nothing went down in the fall 200 pounds super u in the spring 82.7 so 85.5 83.7 82.7 as we went from all the fall to all in the spring mm -hmm. trend kind of went downwards as we went to the spring not bad. You can do it. It's not the end of the world, but you know, it kind of tipped towards you getting all your fertility in, in the fall and the crop will respond to it and it's not going to go anywhere. It's obviously going to utilize it a little bit more, uh, but logistically the challenges, if you don't put any nitrogen down in the fall, well, you can just seed and, you know, just hammer it all in, get seeding done. You'll top dress later on. 
right? In this case, in the spring. But on the flip side, come springtime, uh, there's a million other things going on, and it's probably the last thing you really want to do is go out and top dress. And you got like if you could get it all done in one pass, why wouldn't you do that? And that's kind of what I we know. wanted to. That's that was the motivation for doing this trial. It was to see, you know, what mm-hmm. if there's a benefit, even a little bit, to doing it top dressing in the spring? Well, okay, you make things work, right? Okay, we'll we'll figure it out. But being that there was no benefit, and in fact, there's actually a decrease. Not to mention. So now you got to go over it again. Yep. With a higher priced fertilizer. Never even thought of that. That factor. That, and that one's that one to me, you know, whether it's not super you, you know, whether it's some other or treated enhanced, urea, the treatment costs yeah, something. The yeah, the treatment costs something to yeah. do it, right? Yes, you don't get as much seeding done in the fall uh, per fill because you got to put down more, but man, you don't have to come back with a higher priced product and you don't have to do another pass of it. And actually to that Point. So we did this in last, well, we got some in right now, uh, but we had some in last year, two years ago, where we almost didn't have to touch the field at all we until never, the combine. We never did touch the field. We did have to swath. Oh, yeah. No, I'm just saying like from a, stra- a spraying standpoint. Yeah. It, it established itself so well from the, the previous year. There there was no room for anything else to grow. Like it, it achieved... Uh, uh, row closure early in the season. It's like I said before, it's an unfair competitor. Um, so yeah, no, there was nothing, nothing to compete with it. We didn't, we didn't spray it. We walked away. Didn't uh, spray it. Came in and yeah, we swathed it. Uh, That's cause it was a, it was kind of a banger. Like, Oh man, that, that was, was something else. Like, I don't know if I'll ever do that again, to be honest with you. Maybe not. Yeah. What did we get that year? It was a hundred and 130 bushel? 100, what, yeah, 138 point something. Yeah. Was which, the, which, I mean, there might be people listening to this and being like, mm-hmm. yeah, well, that's my spring wheat crop every year. But. Yeah, but they didn't have somebody in R&D out in the field doing figure eight testing <laughs> with carts and pulverizing the soil and destroying stubble. and then They maybe did. And then know. going dragging openers through the ground yeah. in December, trying to wear them out and break shanks and everything like that. Like, we get out there in the spring and the field is like... Yeah, it's it's challenging. So then, yeah, the the crop just to grow through all of that. It, it, grows, it is a vigorous crop. Like it's unreal. Yeah, it, it is. You know, row closure. Uh, maybe bring up a good point. We had ten. In, we were on ten inch spacing. Ten inch spacing. Yes, that was ten inch spacing. You know, twelve would it fill in quite as nice? Maybe not. Maybe not as quick. Obviously, we know that. We know that. Ten yeah. versus twelve, it's just not going to fill in as quick. Mm-hmm. Um, so on ten, yeah, didn't have to spray at all. No in crop product into that one at all. That uh, year. That year. Yeah. yeah. We have done in the past though. Yeah. But a cheapo one, right? Cheap, 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 cheap. Yeah. 450 little, an acre. Like little 2,4-D or whatever else you used in there. Florox appear 2,4-D. Yeah. Yeah. Any, we can't really spray on a grass on there, can we? Yeah, you can. You can. You uh, can? Yeah. Truck oxidum you can put on there. Oh, really? Yep. Yeah. There you go. So whether it's. Take care of that then. Chief or bison or whatever. Yeah. I'm not sure if we're supposed to talk about brand names or not, but I just did. So there. Yeah. Yeah. We can do whatever we want. One, no thing, fo- one thing we should mention too that I, I find really interesting is uh, the effect copper can have on mm. uh, fall rye and ergot. Perhaps. Yeah. I was just going to say there's no real fungicide that would really help. It, it doesn't really leaf disease yeah, or nothing the, like that. The thing like is when crust, you put it on, like, you don't you don't gain any yield. Yeah. Like, Right. It may look healthier, but it doesn't translate into yield. But one thing that does translate into uh, a definite reduction in ergot, because uh, uh, fall rye is historically susceptible to that. Uh, to ergot. To ergot, yeah. And reason being, right, is that it's just flowers Flowering nature, forever. Yeah. And that's when ergot can get into it. Yeah. That's the biggest problem. Yeah. But there is a drastic reduction in ergot production through the use of copper fertility. That's one thing that I found. Whether you fully apply it, whether you put it on with a granule or whatever. But if you have any amount of uh, copper deficiency, um, it needs to be. Now, we didn't really do any trials with that. No. To be fair. There's lots of other people that But there is some other ones out there. Yeah. Yeah. Now, would you do it granularly or would you put that on? We did it fully. We did both. We've done both. Yeah, we've done both. Actually, uh, depending on the granule that you use... uh, and the the repetitive nature of using your granular, like if you're trying to make an amendment over time hmm. and uh, reduce or improve your copper fertility in your soil, 
uh, we've, we've gone the granular route, okay. applying eight pounds of product to give you a full pound of copper. And we're, you know, kind of working that into our fertility rotation of cereals. Right. You know, that have a tendency of responding more. Uh, cereals have a tendency of responding more. To copper. Yeah. But specifically, yeah, the hybrid fall rye, just because of the... Yeah, like, just... Because what did you tell me? We're going to be... Oh, we're going to be combine in July this year, I think you were trying to tell me, because the heads popped up in like what, June? Like, cause, I mean, well, obviously yeah, the crop it, has a jump on everything. It didn't freaking rain forever <laughs> either. Like, we're in the middle of a drought, and then it did rain. We would have actually been common at the end of July. Well, maybe not the end of Come July. Come on. But if it, if it didn't rain, right, it's kind of an inopportune. It was a nuisance rain, actually, because it didn't, it didn't really help anything, like, as far as yield goes. It just kind of made everything second growth come. And it, was, it, was it, a, it, was, it may turn things into a management nightmare. So we ended Rain up. Rain at harvest is not cool. Yeah. yeah. And neither one of us like laying fall rye down just because it does sprout. So we wanted to leave it stand, but there was a little bit of green growth coming underneath. And Did we end up swathing this year? No. Nope. Last year? We, no, we, we desiccated it. Des- not not uh, pre harvest. We desiccated. Actual desiccant. Didn't Actual we? desiccant. Yeah. Yes. That's right, yes, too. Yes. That's right. So. Got ready. Because it, was it before or after our peas? Man, I cannot remember this fall. Uh, it was going back and forth. I think we did it. We sprayed the peas first. We combined the peas and then we ended up spraying the fall rye because we were sitting there and we had nothing to do. <clears throat> right. Desiccated it. Yeah. It actually worked really good. It was perfect timing. I, and yeah. Point being timing wise, you're into peas kind of areas there, right? So it spreads yeah. out your harvest a little bit more too. And that's another thing I like about the crop is like you said before, yeah. you know, it gets you up and going. If you don't have peas, which we may never have peas again, the classic yeah grow peas once a year hit yourself on the head and then you forget know, if, about if it. it wasn't for a phantomyces you know we might consider it again but yeah. because of the fact that we're plagued with that uh phantomyces peas are just they're tough tell you what we're not going to grow peas for 10 more years deal yeah you heard it here yeah this is it this <laughs> is in stone yeah good I'm, I'm happy about that there. I'd like to be pounding the desk with my finger right now to be that emphatic that we're not growing peas anymore. Yeah. But apparently I'm not allowed to pound the desk because it makes sounds into the mics. So. <laughs> you can do whatever you want, man. <laughs> Except swear. Can't yeah. swear. Well, if you want to. Uh, I think then fall rye, does that take us through kind of the whole, like what would we do different? What do we do different this year? We got fall rye in right now. We seeded it. Uh, we did put the seed... Well, we tried two different things actually this year. We got a couple of different things on the go. Uh, we did that. We had our Trimax drill, so seed going on its own, FOSS going down the sideband, and then we had nitrogen going down the in, into the mid row. Uh, so we got that going on on one quarter, but on the other half, we actually had to drop that back knife to get in through the stubble. Correct. So now we we're playing around with phosphorus in the seed row. With that. And then I think, oh, what did I do? I think I put some FOSS out in the mid row with that too. So I played around a little bit on, on it. and I never know what he's doing. Yeah. Yeah. I hope people understand that. <laughs> keep you guessing a little bit there. Uh, he goes out and sees the field and I come back five days later and there's flags jammed in the field <laughs> all over the place. Like, That's what, just what, me what, messing up. What, what, what did you do here? I'm not telling. Yeah, I messed up and I just put flags up so it makes it look like yeah. there's a trial. But we do actually have some, some interesting things in there. Our crop is huge this year though. Like mm-hmm. it's what five six leaf going into winter, oh it's, bigger than that. It, well, it's, it's bigger. It's, it's green. It, it's bigger than that. It actually we, we've achieved row closure already. I'm really curious to see how that compares because some years it's only like two leaf going into winter, right? And now with some, yeah. we got a full on, yeah, like you said, ground cover. There's a good growth happening. So the elk love it. <laughs> yes, well, we like elk, so <laughs> we'll have to uh, yeah keep an eye on that one though for sure this spring and you know how it turns out next year, but. So this trial and fall rye in general, and like I said, could be potentially utilized in other winter crops. Maybe we'll try some winter canola we're throwing around, but winter wheat as well. Uh, you know, essentially just found that putting in all your fertility down at the time of seeding, uh, you know, the nitrogen is not going anywhere uh, that, from what we found here. And I think that that's a really good opportunity to just get the crop in and then walk away. You might not have to touch it till the combine rolls the next year like what a yeah. what a cool thing that is uh not to you know promote the crop exactly well kind of i kind of like it though mm-hmm. uh in general but just how your nutrients can get placed if you are doing those winter crops and i think putting it all down at the time of seeding is a is a very very 
definite possibility and I, we've had pretty good success with it. Yeah. Anything else? Anything else on the, on the fall ride there? No, I think one thing I would encourage people is to, it's not just us that have found putting all your, all your nitrogen down in the fall uh, is, is, is a benefit because you get all the work out of the way. But uh, there's a lot of other people out there. And if people want to search it up, they, they're more than, more than welcome to do that. But there's a lot of other people that uh, have found the exact same thing that split applying uh, nitrogen didn't really provide a benefit. Uh, you're better off just putting it all down in the fall and getting it all out of the way and be done. If you know how much nitrogen you're going to put down, put it down. Get it in the ground. Get her done. Get her done. Awesome. Well, I think that's where we're going to end this conversation then. That was a pretty good rant. Or not a rant, but it was a good conversation. Anyway. I like it. Yeah, it's yeah. good. It's a good crop. But next, uh, yeah, yeah. Tune in to the next episode. Again, we're going to have some more hopefully good chats. I just hope um, this crop that's coming off next year is going to be as good as the the one we grew in 22. Oh, if we could do that twice in a lifetime, I'd be so happy. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah. Well, we'll let you know. Maybe on another episode. There so you go. thank you very much for tuning into this one. And yeah, tune into another one where we're, we'll continue the conversation on the agronomics of equipment and uh, get you growing. Thanks a lot. Have a good day.